We got updates on The Boys Season 3, Squid Game Season 2, Stranger Things Season 4, and some more David Cronenberg news, believe it or not. So let's get into this. What's your favorite scary movie? Everybody, what's up? Killjoy Jake here, and instead of having friends, I have horror movies. Today we're talking a little bit about a bunch of horror television news like I was talking about, and also some David Cronenberg movie news. We have even more things to talk about, which is totally insane. So getting into this David Cronenberg news, because while there's been a lot to talk about lately with Mr. Cronenberg, even in his old age, the guy is almost 80, <laughs> and he's still pumping out movie after movie, which is crazy. He has a film called Crimes of the Future that comes out this June, and next year, he has a movie called The Shrouds coming out that he wrote and directed. Same thing with Crimes of the Future, and now he's talking about making yet another movie, which is insane, and this time it's based off of one of his first novels. Now the movie will be called Consumed, and it's actually based off of a 2015 David Cronenberg novel, which actually had plans to become some kind of series over at AMC, but unfortunately that fell through. Once again, they actually had some plans with Netflix then to make the series. Once again, that fell through, so Cronenberg is saying, screw it, I'm doing it myself. Cronenberg even said in, in a quote, I tried and we got to do two episodes and the Netflix decided not to do it. And I was disappointed because I was interested in streaming in cinematic terms. I thought that would be a very interesting experience for me as a writer, as a creator, and then also as a director. Director. And maybe I'll have that experience one day. So the project that I was talking to Netflix about, it will be a feature film instead. I don't have a screenplay yet for that, but I will be writing it. The plotline for Consumed is a little convoluted, but I will read it here for you, even though it's like quite longer than I would imagine. Uh, this seems like a very complicated novel, although I've never read it, I am quite interested. Stylish and camera-obsessed Naomi and Nathan thrive on the yellow journalism of the social media age. Naomi finds herself drawn to the headlines surrounding a famous couple, Celestine and Aristide, Marxist philosophers and sexual libertines. Interesting. Celestine has been found dead and Aristine has disappeared. Police suspect him of killing her and consuming parts of her body. It is called consumed after all. We're probably dealing with a little bit of cannibalism here. That's always fun. Yet Naomi sets off to find him and as she delves deeper into the couple's lives, she discovers the new story may only skim the surface of the disturbing acts they performed together. <laughs> Getting more and more interesting as it goes along. Like I said, very convoluted. Journalist Nathan, meanwhile, is in Budapest photographing the country controversial work of an unlicensed surgeon named Zoltan Molnar, once sought by Interpol for organ trafficking. <laughs> yeah, like I said, a lot of really interesting and convoluted elements working together. I could talk about a little more here, but like it's just, it gets crazier and crazier. So essentially this movie seems, this idea for a book, which is now being turned into a movie, seems like it's going to be a little convoluted and tough to kind of combine all these things together. But regardless, I'm still very interested in seeing this thing. Literally anything Cronenberg puts out, I will at least give it a watch and I will check it out. I don't love all of his movies, but the ones I do love hold a very special place next to my heart. So if you take anything away from this update, go check out Crimes of the Future next month. So talking a little bit about The Boys Season 3, I'm very excited to see what happens in this new season considering a lot of the things that happened in the past two and things that are now set up for this next upcoming season. In a brand new trailer we just got yesterday, we see a lot of brand new elements added to these characters that they're going to have to explore. Literally a some kind of chemical that makes our characters turn into superheroes for 24 hours and it raises this really awesome question of morality about like, should they be doing that? Does that kind of go against literally everything they've been fighting for to stop Sue? to stop people from being like having superhuman powers because it leads to ultimately what the company of Vought is, how that's evil and why that's kind of just being used for like monetary purposes and influencing the media and all this crap. I'm really excited to see how this plays out, this question of morality. It's something that the boys have done a really good job with throughout the past two seasons and now we're making that question even more interesting. It's something I've talked about in the past with a lot of superhero things. I'm not really interested in just straight up like, oh, superhero versus bad guy and they kind of just fight each other. 
trailer. That it, That's just not enough for me to be interested. I like when you throw in these, like, really dark and deep-thinking questions about, like, are we, what, are, is what we're doing actually a good thing? Are we actually benefiting society by using, like, superpowers or whatever for, for the good of humanity, or are we just using this for personal gain? And once again, we see, like, a question of morality very similar to that in this new season just from the trailer alone. We get Laz Alonzo's character asking the question of, like, well, is this, is this exactly what we're fighting against? Like, th this is, that's a really cool and interesting idea. Yeah, like for them to be using this chemical compound to turn them into soups for 24 hours to go and actually fight all of like the Vought superheroes. So yeah, that's that's awesome. I'm, I'm very excited to see how this plays out and how Butch's character will respond to all of it. I'm, I'm very excited to see like what he does, how it ends, how it plays out, and if him and Homelander maybe have a fight. Because something else we saw in the trailer was Homelander's emotional state really just crumbling, man. I mean, it's been it's something that's been set up since season one that has slowly gotten worse and worse as time has progressed with his character. Is that going to be his kryptonite is that this character's kryptonite his emotional damage like that he can't quite get over is that what's going to ultimately lead him to, to fail even though he's like one of the most powerful beings in this entire universe does it even matter if he's emotionally compromised and then maybe butch can come in there and kill him in this new season i think it could happen it's a possibility although i will say if they plan on doing more seasons of the show, Homelander is kind of the big bad. So I don't think that they, they'll kill him at the end of this season. Although, I am thinking that him and Carl Urban's character have some kind of fight in, in this season. Which I think would be really cool and I'm very excited for June 3rd when this thing finally comes out. If you're interested in the boys and you want me to talk about it a little more. I mean, I know it is technically a superhero show. But it is very rooted in horror. With lots of blood and gore and psychological terror throughout. So if you want me to talk a little more about it, leave me something about it in the comments. And now for the Netflix portion portion of this video, let's talk a little bit about Squid Game Season 2. So, creator Hyung Dong Wook had recently given us an update back in November saying that they were already developing a Season 2, but he said it would be a while. Now we kind of have some kind of, like, a little closer of an idea of when the release is going to be for it. Originally, he had said that late 2023 is probably when it'll come out, but now he's saying probably sometime in 2024. In a new quote where he says, a Season 2 release in 2024 is also in the realm of possibility, even though they had already kind of established a late 2023 release. For me personally, like I, I've always said about just about anything I cover on this page, I would rather them to just take their time for it to be good. I'll, I'll wait. I have no problem doing that. I, I have patience. There's a lot of other really cool things going on in this world right now. And if I have to wait for another season of this excellent show to be done right and done correctly, I'm totally fine with waiting. That's fine by me. Another thing I think is really interesting about this is that according to Netflix, something that they've stated recently is the Squid Game universe has just begun, which makes me worried that they're probably going to really cash in on this thing and start some other side series and start some like just a bunch of other things going on in this in this world, which I kind of hope they don't do. It's something that uh, Disney Plus has beaten to death with a lot of their IPs such as Star Wars, Marvel. There's, there's a lot of very unnecessary things in both of those categories. I feel that aren't all that great. I think a lot of the Star Wars shows so far have been fantastic, but there's a lot of things being announced that I just feel like is super unnecessary and just like, hey, we're making this so that we can make money with our streaming platform. That's awesome, right? And now Netflix is really starting to fall down that rabbit hole a lot more recently because of a lot of things going on with their company. Now they're starting to do like a bunch of like whack stuff that not a whole lot of people are excited for. Like this new Resident Evil series, which honestly I don't even have any excitement towards and probably won't cover because it's not even Resident Evil at that point. I don't know if y'all saw the trailer for that and if you have any familiarity with how those game story goes... That, it looks nothing like Resident Evil, man. I don't know. I'm just, I'm not excited for it at all. I'll probably check it out. But it looks like they're giving the giving Resident Evil the same treatment that they gave to Cowboy Bebop. One of my favorite animes, and I'm pretty upset about that. I really hope Netflix does not do the same thing with Squid Game. Because that first season was fantastic. Continue that story, but you don't need, like, a spin-off series about, like, the, the one girl's backstory and her family and all. Like, I, we don't, we don't need that. We don't need that. Just give us a good season, too. Put your efforts towards one thing and it'll make money and it'll bring people to your streaming platform. I promise. Regardless though, I am very excited for Squid Game Season 2 and like I said, I'll wait if, it, if, if that's what it takes to make this thing good and it's not another Resident Evil, it's not another Cowboy Bebop, that's totally fine with me. Take your time, Netflix. We'll wait. We'll wait. I promise. I promise. We'll still be there in like a year. <laughs> and we'll, we'll be waiting. Just give us updates. That's all we ask. And now we also have a Stranger Things Season 4 update that yet again confirms my suspicions that this new season will pay homage to one of my favorite horror franchises of all time, A Nightmare on Elm Street. With a brand new quote from Natalia Dyer, who plays character Nancy Wheeler. By the way, a character who is named after Nancy Thompson 
from A Nightmare on Elm Street. She was recently asked if like they were explicitly going to reference A Nightmare on Elm Street with this next season of television, especially after the Duffer brothers had said for season four that they wanted to bring some kind of antagonist to this franchise that is kind of similar to a Freddy Krueger, is similar to an 80s villain from horror movies. To which Natalia Dyer responded with, it was definitely discussed. I think the brothers are pretty open with their references and their ideas. They love this genre and all of the stories that they draw from. I think they were pretty upfront about this season going off of that film in particular. I, r I rest my case. I rest my case. There's so, <laughs> there's so much evidence that would suggest that season four of Stranger Things will pay homage to Mr. Freddy Krueger. We have Robert England back for this new season, if you're unaware, who is playing the character of Victor Creel. Now, there's also this character confirmed to be in this uh, new season of television called Vecna. And it's this weird, crazy creature. He's from the Upside Down, and guess what? There's a shot in the trailer where it looks like he's got a Freddy glove, something that looks like a Freddy glove. It's not specifically Freddy Krueger, something I want to make very clear. I'm not saying the character of Vecna equals Freddy Krueger, I'm saying that char character of Vecna is a massive homage to the character, and probably voiced by Mr. Robert England. It's something I've been preaching on this page for a while about Stranger Things Season 4, and if this Natalia Dyer quote isn't confirmation of that, I don't know what else I could possibly throw out there about it. It seems like many disagree about uh, Stranger Things Season 4 possibly taking that route, being an homage to uh, A Nightmare on Elm Street, but there is so much evidence that would point towards it, and I'm all for it. I am so down for it, I think it would be sweet. What a cool idea for for an antagonist character for your new season. And if you're still not convinced by all this, there's even more evidence that would suggest that maybe they're leaning a little more towards like referencing one of the best Nightmare on Elm Street sequels, Dream Warriors, with their most, most recent poster. I talk a little bit about that in this video up here. You might want to check that out. Anyways, with all of these stories on mostly horror television, what are you the most excited for? Leave me something about it in the comments below. Thank you guys so much for watching this new horror movie update video. Don't forget to like this video and subscribe for more horror movie updates and horror television updates especially. That's what kind of what this uh, video's focus was for the most part. If you want to support this channel further, make sure to support me on Patreon or become a channel member by hitting that join button on my page. Thank you guys for watching this video again and as always, don't forget to kill it out there y'all.